tonight on Size Eyes on the Sky. A pleasant good Tuesday evening, everyone. We're taking a live look right now from our I-35 camera in Clear Lake. You can see the sun is still up. We have some haze in the air, but overall temperatures are very pleasant. A current look at temperatures across the city of Ames. It is 77 degrees and winds are out of the south at around 10 miles per hour. Coming up, we'll tell you more about when those rain chances may return. And I'll also have a look at your national forecast. Trey also has your national forecast. All that and much more as this Tuesday, September 22nd edition of Size Eyes in the Skies starts now. Live from Studio 171 in Ames, Iowa, the Iowa State Meteorology Department team of meteorologists brings you the latest weather from around the country and out your front door. Iowa State's longest running television program and the only live weather broadcast on campus starts right now. This is Size Eyes on the Skies. Now it's time for tonight's weather story. On this date in 1995, unseasonably cold weather affected most of Iowa from September 20th to 22nd. On the 20th and 21st, temperatures failed to climb out of the 40s in many areas and on the 21st, a few snowflakes and ice pellets mixed with rain were observed at 10 stations scattered across Northern Iowa, including Sibley, Spencer, Clarion, and Parkersburg. This was the earliest fall occurrence of snow in Iowa since 1938. The coldest temperatures followed on the morning of the 22nd with a freeze record across nearly the entire state. Temperatures as low as 24 degrees Fahrenheit occurred at Emmitsburg and Sibley. At Des Moines, the low was 31 degrees Fahrenheit, trying, tying the earliest freeze on record at that location which was previously set on September 22, 1913. In northwestern Iowa, temperatures remained below freezing for nearly eight hours at some locations, the resulting soybean losses totaling around $200 million. Now here's Trey with a look at your national forecast. Welcome back to Size Eyes on the Skies. This is your national forecast. We begin this evening with a look at our watches and warnings and across the mid of uh, the West Coast and then the Intermountain West. That is where we have fires continuing to burn and poor air quality conditions. The areas that you see shaded in gray are under air quality alerts. That does include parts of California. And then we also have Wyoming and Colorado included in that as well. The opposite issues though, once you get down to the Gulf Coast states, that is where we have flooding issues and mainly those from the remnants of Tropical Storm Beta. Flash flood watches and warnings this evening from the Houston metro area extending east along the I-10 corridor into southeastern Louisiana. And I'll show you how much rain we will see in some of those areas coming up in just a moment. A national look at the satellite and radar picture. We've got the remnants of Tropical Storm Beta this evening. The center of that just to the southeast of Houston, Texas. And then you can see the rainfall from that spreading up through the Arklatex and then into Arkansas this evening. Meanwhile, across much of the Midwest and then into the Ohio River Valley and then in the East Coast, high pressure is dominating. And so really no major weather systems in that area. And with that high pressure, that allows us to see clearing skies. And then across the Intermountain West, really not too much to speak of. We've got a couple showers, but overall conditions are fairly dry. And these are some of the areas that could really use a good rain. As we fast forward here on the graphics here and we get into your look at your tropic, tropical activity right now, we have trop, uh, tropical storm or hurricane Teddy that is continuing to move up the East Coast this evening. It's well offshore, so not going to be a major issue for some of the larger cities, but still going to see some rough surf and some gusty winds, and then even some rainfall from that across parts of Maine. But the core of that system will track to the north, uh, moving up into Newfoundland and Canada, so really no major issues with that. A look at temperatures across the nation this evening. You can see we've got the warm spots currently across the Midwest and then down into the desert Southwest. We're gonna go a little bit closer here region by region. You can see the warm spot right now currently sitting at 87 in Sioux Falls right now. You can see 80s across much of the Dakotas and Nebraska this evening. A little bit cooler once you get over to the Great Lakes states. And then as we move to the Northeast, you can see temperatures. These are some of the cooler readings across the nation. 60s right now across most of the major metro areas. and then. 
once you get into the inland areas and higher terrain, temperatures are down into the 50s. And then across the southeast, we've got temperatures in the 60s as well with additional clouds and showers. And then the hot spot right now, the desert southwest, Phoenix currently sitting at 100. And then we've got 60s, a mixture of 60s to 70s and 80s across the Pacific Northwest this evening. A look at the national future cast. We're going to watch that system, Tropical Storm Beta, the remnants of that continue to move to the east across parts of Louisiana and Mississippi during the overnight hours tonight and during the day tomorrow. That will bring heavy rain into those areas. As we get into tomorrow evening and into Thursday morning, we've got another system that will be, that will be moving in the upper Midwest across parts of Minnesota and Iowa. That will bring a couple showers and storms. And then we've got our next system coming in also tomorrow night into Thursday morning across the Pacific Northwest, bringing some rain and storms there as well. Here's a look at the upper atmosphere over the next couple of days, really not seeing too much change here. We've got the ridge continuing to keep the desert southwest fairly hot and dry. And then you can see that next upper level trough coming in to the Pacific Northwest. And that system will traverse the northern U.S. as we get into this weekend, bringing more showers and storms to areas that have not seen rainfall in quite some time. But you can see that is going to be what we're going to be dealing with over the next couple of days. Forecast high temperatures tomorrow. You can see a fairly decent spread here in the temperatures, very hot across the desert southwest, and then 80s across most, most of the Midwest, and then into the entire into the, into the Ohio River Valley, and then still pretty cool where we've got the showers and storms down to the south. Here's a look at my extended forecast. This is for New York City, New York, over the next several days. Not too much precipitation on the way in, the, in these locations. High temperatures generally in the 80s, overnight lows into the 60s. And then as we get into early next week, we'll see temperatures cool down just a little bit. More size eyes on the skies coming up right after this. Main straight for that national forecast. Now it's time for tonight's trivia question. Which place on earth has the most frequent lightning strikes? Is it A, Houston, Texas, B, Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela, C, Kifuka, Congo, or D, Beijing, China? We'll have your answer coming right up, but first, here's Trey with your Iowa forecast. Welcome back to Size Eyes on the Skies. Let's take a look now at your Iowa forecast. Let's begin with a look at the Iowa DOT camera. This is at I-35 in Clear Lake. You can see a clear sky this evening. A uh, very pleasant evening to be out and about if you're across central Iowa. No major weather concerns to speak of for at least the next 12 to 24 hours. As we take a look at the Doppler radar right now, a clean sweep across central Iowa. No precipitation to speak of. And this radar has been quiet for quite some time. We could definitely use some more rain and thunderstorm chances. But the good news is we do have at least a few in the forecast. And I'll share that with you in just a moment. A look at temperatures right now across the state. You can see we are ranging from the lower 70s off towards the east and then middle and upper 70s as you get back into western Iowa, closer to the Missouri River Valley. Here's a look at your weather headlines for this week. The main three things that we're going to be looking at here are above average temperatures. We're going to see that carry us all the way up into this weekend. Isolated storm chances as well, mainly looking at Thursday and Saturday with the best chance of those occurring. And then we have a late month cool down on the way as well. Things as we get closer to the fall and October time period. A look at the satellite and radar picture across the nation this evening. We've got high pressure down to our south and east, and that is allowing us to see a southerly flow here across central Iowa this evening, bringing in some of that warmer air from the south. But we haven't really tapped into the moisture just yet, but hopefully we will begin to tap into some of that as we get into the latter part of this week, bringing a couple showers and thunderstorms to the area. A look at the satellite and radar a little bit closer to, to uh, central Iowa this evening. We've got some high clouds streaming in from the south. That is associated with some of the moisture with the remnants of Tropical Storm Beta moving across the Gulf Coast states. And so we have some of those clouds moving into our far southern counties this evening, but no precipitation is expected uh, with those, unfortunately, as we get the remainder of this evening. A look at the future cast. As we get through the next 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours, we've got more clouds coming up from the south, mainly associated with that moisture from the tropics, but no precipitation with that expected here across central Iowa. As we get into the afternoon hours tomorrow, we've got mostly clear skies, maybe a few clouds, a few more clouds down to the south. And then we're also watching another system approach the Dakotas. That will begin to uh, ignite a few scattered showers and thunderstorms as we get into late Wednesday night and Thursday. And then that system will move to the southeast, likely affecting northeastern portions of the state as we get into Thursday. So with that, we do have 
have a chance of storms, mainly for areas along and north of I-80 and then along and east of I-35. So basically the northeastern quadrant of the state has the best chance of seeing at least a few isolated showers and storms as we get into Thursday. Looking beyond Thursday and then looking as we get into this weekend, we've got another system that will be approaching from the Pacific Northwest as we get into Friday and Saturday. That will bring a chance for a few isolated showers and storms as well. The highest coverage on that will be up to the north and east. And then as we get into this weekend, we're going to see some cooler weather begin to work its way in. And then maybe a couple more chances for a few low chances of showers as we get into early next week. The forecast for tonight, 53 for the low winds out of the south at 3 miles per hour. And then as we get into the day tomorrow, fairly pleasant day, partly cloudy skies, a high of 81. The hourly temperature forecast shows those temperatures quickly warming with those southerly winds through the mid-morning hours tomorrow. We'll max out at around 81 tomorrow afternoon in Ames. And you can see that is around 8 degrees above normal for this time of year. The extended outlook shows we have that isolated storm chance for Thursday afternoon, mainly across the northeastern quadrant of the state. Dry on Friday and then another chance of storms as we get into Saturday. Notice the temperatures go from the upper 80s on Friday back into the 70s for this weekend, upper 70s. And then next Tuesday, that is when we see a strong cold front arrive with high temperatures in the 60s. Overnight lows generally in the upper 50s to lower 50s as we get into next week. Thanks, Trey. Let's take another look at tonight's trivia question. Which place on Earth has the most frequent lightning strikes? A. Houston, Texas. B. Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. C. Kifi Kifuka, Congo. Or D. Beijing, China. Let's see what you viewers have to say. On our Twitter poll, looks like about 8% picked A in Houston. 77% said B in Venezuela. 15% said C in the Congo, and no one said D in Beijing, China. Actually, most of you got it correct. The answer is B, Lake Maracaibo, Venezuela. Thank you for t participating in the Twitter poll. That's all, but that's all for this edition of Size Eyes on the Skies. Please be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And you can find every show on our Size Eyes YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next Tuesday.